Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming to our giant workshop titled, Use Your Game Developer Superpowers to Fight the Climate Crisis. This workshop is made possible by the Adrian Arsh Rockefeller Foundation Resilience Center at the Atlantic Council. So a couple of years ago, the center set a 10-year goal to reach 300 million people with climate resilient solutions through gaming. This workshop is part of the effort to reach that goal, to ensure that developers and game creators like yourselves have the tools and knowledge you need to include climate resilience topics in your games. The Arstrock team is tackling their big goal in three big ways. They're to make people more resilient to climate impacts. They're working with AAA game companies to include climate and resilience messaging and lessons. They're working to educate developers on climate impacts and resilience. And they have grant money for indie developers who have working prototypes with climate messaging in their games. Our goals for today are to help you make a difference. We're going to help you understand the climate crisis and related interventions. We're going to through both theory and practice, teach you fundamental design approaches for effective climate design. And we're going to empower you so that you leave here today better equipped to effectively design for climate change intervention. We're going to hear from speakers from all over the world today through the magic of technology. We've all worked together to create this workshop for you, drawing on our different backgrounds, experiences, and areas of expertise to make this time that we spend with you today as effective as we can. So from now until 4 p.m., we're going to deliver the highest level of expertise we can to you and also let you practice along with us. And if you do stick around all day, and I hope you do, if you can, you will have the chance to practice everything we're teaching, and you will have a design pitch at the end of the day for a climate game that you will get feedback on from your peers. Oh, that's what I just said. All of us are speakers. Also, all of us speakers are also active members of the IGDA Climate Sig, which we'll hear more about throughout the day, uh, which is an online community of game developers from companies big and small, also climate activists, also academics, and more. So I'd like to personally welcome you to join if you like. Hard topics like these are easier to tackle if you are part of a team. I do have to move on now, so this QR code is going to go away in like five seconds, but I will show it to you again later. Don't worry. So now that we know what our goals for today are and who we are, I'm going to talk to you about how we mean to pull it off. So I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about me. Hi, I'm Trevin. I've designed for change. I've spent the last 12 years designing games for transformational change. I've worked on games for financial capability and STEM education and environmental conservation. I'm one of the co-authors of the Environmental Game Design Playbook, which is a first attempt at offering evidence-backed approaches to designing environmental games in an accessible manner. In accessible manner. I have a master's in design for change from the University of Edinburgh, where I studied and practiced multidisciplinary interventions into social, technical, and environmental issues. So when I say I design games that transform players, I'm borrowing language straight from Sabrina Solba. This is not the only way to describe what we do, but it is one of my favorites. That transformational games are those games developed with the intention of changing players in a specific way that transfers and persists beyond the game. So our goal today is to turn all of you into more effective transformational game designers in the context of the climate crisis. And our approach is informed by our multidisciplinary background. So today, we want you to learn. We want you to apply what you've learned. And we want you to start expressing what you've learned. That's our strategy. We've got, again, five main topics today, five main speakers, brought to you in a mix of asynchronous recordings, streaming in live from across the world, and me here in the room live with you today. That's the learn part. But with each topic, we're also going to ask you to do something as a group, as a table. And as the day goes on, we hope your table becomes more of a team. We don't want you to just listen to us. We hope you also practice with us. And during these practical sections, I'll be here to answer any questions you might have. And we hope all of this will build naturally. So first, we've got Grant, who will cover what the climate crisis means globally and which interventions might be useful to focus a game on. Arnaud will stream in from across the world to work with you on how you can make a difference no matter your skill set. Chance will share some examples of successful climate games that might serve as an inspiration. Paula will dig into a theory of action and help you begin a pitch for your game. And I will challenge you to push your concepts a little bit further. All of this builds towards the end. Before this workshop is over this afternoon, you will all have a pitch for a climate game, a story to tell about how a game could be made and could be effective. 
And then you'll share your pitches with other teams, and you'll be able to provide feedback and get feedback. If all of this feels like a lot for one day, your feelings aren't wrong. We have so much to tell you. We have so little time to tell it to you. I hope this framing helps us keep us, helps keep us all focused. And before we kick off, I need to tell you about why I personally am here. I took this photo inside my apartment in a couple, year, a couple years ago. Uh, it was noon, it was midday. This is an unedited photo. There's no filter on this for dramatic effect, and the projector is plenty bright enough. I was living in San Francisco, California, and California was extremely on fire. There were 9,917 wildfires in California in 2020. The smoke in the air came from the forests and towns nearby that were burning down. And I can tell you that for me and my friends and my neighborhood, it felt like the world was ending. And I was one of the very lucky ones. The fire didn't actually reach me. I fled across the country to stay with my family, and then I moved across the world to a place that does not have forest fires. And when I tell people in my new home in Scotland that I'm from California, they often react, they're like, oh, why'd you come from California? It's so sunny and perfect there. And you came to a place where it rains all the time. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. Your world isn't ever on fire, and that's not something I take for granted anymore. We're going to spend a lot of time today bouncing between big ideas and little details. We know that this is a crisis that is happening right now, but this is not a workshop about solving the climate crisis. There is no workshop for that, not for game developers, not for anyone. We're here today because the planet is filled with individuals, with families, with communities, and each of them have their own personal stories and experiences dealing with climate impacts. You may have your own stories to tell, your friends might, your families might, some of your players definitely do, and more well in the future. And that's where you come in. You can't save the world, sorry, but you can make a difference a meaningful, positive difference. You can have an impact on your players, and that matters. That is everything. So we're here to begin to show you how. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your day with us. We can't do this alone. We need all of us. Welcome to the team. So coming up next, we're going to tell you about climate impacts. And as you hear about these, I want you to take note of which you might focus on. We're going to ask each table to pick one climate topic to focus on today. But before I even switch over to Grant to discuss climate topics around the world, uh, we have a special guest from the Self-Employed Women's Association who is going to talk to you about climate hazards here in India, more locally. Uh, the SEWA is a confluence of three movements, the women's movement, labor movement, and cooperative movement. And these movements are the basis of the SEWA's vision to improve the lives of marginalized social groups, organizing its members based on their skills into their own economic organizations, collectives, and cooperatives, and federations, and producer companies. The SCWA is a family of member-owned economic organizations that provide livelihood security and reduce vulnerability through 3,200 SHGs, 110 cooperatives, 15 economic federations, three producer companies. I'd like to turn things over to you for the next few minutes. नमस्ते मेरा नाम पार्वती बेन है मैं गुजरात अहमदाबाद सेवा से आई हुई हूँ हमारी सेवा में 20 लाख असंगठित क्षेत्र का कामदार का सदस्य हमने बनाए और वो सदस्य की मैं एजुकेटिव कमेटी मेंबर हूँ और सभी धंधे धंधा की मैं बात नहीं कर लेकिन मैं निर्माण की बात करती हूँ तो निर्माण जो कामदार है तो ये जो क्लाइमेट चेंज हुआ है ये क्लाइमेट चेंज की वजह से काफ़ी दिक्कतें आती है जो कामदार है उसको जो साइड पे काम पे जाते तो वहाँ टॉयलेट की व्यवस्था नहीं होती है पानी की व्यवस्था नहीं होती है और जो ये जो तापमान डिग्री जो तापमान की बढ़ जाती है तो उसकी वजह से जो धंधा का हमारा जो साधन है वो भी बहुत ज़्यादा गर्म हो जाता है और उसमें हाथ पाँव में छाले पड़ जाते हैं अगर ज़्यादा तापमान बढ़ जाता है तो कामदार की ऐसे दिक्कतें आती कि गिर जाते उसको डायरिया हो जाते 
उसको वॉमिटिंग हो जाते हैं तो काफ़ी सारी निर्माण में कामदार जो है उसमें दिक्कत आती है दूसरी मैं बात वेंडर्स की बोलूँ तो वेंडर्स कामदार जो है उसको ऊपर आकाश नीचे धरती और रोड पे रोड पे जो डामर वाला जो रोड है बहुत ज़्यादा गर्म होता है उसमें वो पाथर न पाथर के उसमें वो, वो अपना माल बेचती है और ज़्यादा तापमान बढ़ जाता है तो तापमान बढ़ जाने की वजह से ये जो हमारे जो कामदार है उसकी रोजगारी छीन 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 लेते हमारा जो माल है बिगड़ जाता है जैसे फ्रूट है सब्जी है सब बिगड़ जाती है उसकी वजह से काफ़ी उसको नुकसान होता है दूसरा मैं बोलूँ वेस्ट रिसाइकल तो वेस्ट रिसाइकल जो है वो रात में दो बजे ढाई बजे तीन बजे वो लोग कागज़ बिनने के लिए जाते हैं तो उसको कुत्ता काट लेता है या उसके ऊपर चोरी का इल्जाम आता है या उसको जो कांच जो है तो कांच में अगर वो छू लेती है तो हाथ में भी नुकसान उसका होता है और दूसरा मैं बोलूँ जो वेस्ट रिसाइकल है जैसे जो पुराना जो मोबाइल है बैटरी है और जो यांत्रिक जो साधन है उसको जलाते तो उसका जो प्रदूषण फैलाते तो उसको स्वास्थ्य की वो सब बीमारी हो जाती है तीसरा मैं बोलूँ तो जो घरेलू कामदार जो घर में बैठ के काम करने वाली बहन है जो बीड़ी अगरबत्ती सिलाई वो जो धंधे वाली बहन है उसके ऊपर तो वो उस, उसका भी घर भी खुद का अच्छा नहीं होता है कोई पतरे वाला होता है तो वो धूप की वजह से उसको भी ज़्यादा दिक्कतें आ जाती है और मैं जो भावनगर अलंग की बात बोलूँ तो अलंग शिप जो है उसमें हमारी काफ़ी बहन है जो काम करती है तो वहाँ का जो है प्लास्टिक उसको गालते है भट्टी में वो गर्म प्लास्टिक जो होता है तो उसको लेके उसको मशीन में उलुआ करके डालते हैं तो उसके हाथ में भी काफ़ी छाले पड़ जाते हैं स्किन का बहुत प्रॉब्लम होते हैं गायनिक प्रॉब्लम होते हैं तो हमारा जो असंगठित कामदार जो है तो उसको जो हमारा जो रोजगारी है क्लाइमेट चेंज की वजह से हमारी रोजगारी में ज़्यादा असर पड़ता है और मैं एक बात बोलूँ कि जो यूपी है तो यूपी में हमारी जो बहन है बंगड़ी बनाने का काम करती है कांच की बंगड़ी बनाने का काम करती है तो वो बहनों को भी बहुत सारे स्किन का प्रॉब्लम होता है गायनिक प्रॉब्लम होता है और जो क्लाइमेट चेंज तो क्लाइमेट चेंज जो है ये हमारी रोजगारी के साथ जुड़ा हुआ है मैं एक बात बोलूँ कि अभी जो कोविड महामारी आया तो कोविड महामारी आया तो अपने जो रस्सी ढूँढी तो वो रस्सी की वजह से क्लाइमेट चेंज क्लाइमेट चेंज जो है ना उसके भी बहुत छुपी महामारी वो जो क्लाइमेट चेंज है और कोविड जो है तो कोविड में काफ़ी लोगों की जान चली गई और जो रस्सी हमने ढूंढा तो रस्सी की वजह से काफ़ी लोगों हमारे बच गए लेकिन जो क्लाइमेट चेंज है वो आने वाली सालों में कई लो, लाखों लोगों की एक दो ढाई लाख की जान चली जाएगी क्योंकि जो असंगठित क्षेत्र का जो कामदार है वो लोगों के साथ क्लाइमेट चेंज और रोजगारी और उसकी जिंदगी के साथ जुड़ा है तो काफ़ी बहनों को हमारी रोजगारी में दिक्कतें आती है धन्यवाद मैं गुजरात सेवा अहमदाबाद से हूँ और मेरा नाम गौरी दर्जी है जो हमारी बहन ने बताया ऐसे कि हमारी जो बहनें हैं खास जो हमें रोजिंदा ज़रूरत है वो एक चीज़ में बता रही हूँ कि नमक जो हमारी रण में बहनें काम कर रही है हम जो रण में काम कर रहे हैं नमक का काम तो नमक का काम क्या है तो वो जो अभी वातावरण का जो बदलाव है तो नमक का काम जो करने पूरी फैमिली रण में चली जाती है और उनके हिसाब से नौ महीना हम रण में रहते हैं और रण में जब पहले जो काम करने एक तो झूपड़ा है कंतन का झूपड़ा होता है और जो काबड़ा बनाती है वो गाबड़ा में वो पगली पाड़ती है पगली पाड़ के जमीन कड़क करती है जो नमक पकाने के लिए तो वो जो पकाती है तब उनके पैरों में छाला उनकी गर्मी और बहुत सारी बहुत सारी बीमारियाँ आती है उनके बच्चों में क्योंकि पूरी फैमिली नमक का काम कर रही है तो जो गर्मी ज़्यादा क्लाइमिंग चेंज से अचानक बारिश हो जाती है अचानक गर्मी हो जाती है तो जो बनाया हुआ वो जो नमक का काम वो पूरा बिखर जाता है तो फिर फिर से उसको एक महीने तक काम करना पड़ता है तो एक तो उनकी रोजगारी में बहुत दिक्कत आती है और जो पैसे उनके जो व्यापारी के पास से उधार लिए है तो दूसरी बार उनको पैसा लेना पड़ता है तो नुकसान बहुत आता है क्योंकि जो ये पाँच साल से जो वातावरण का बदलाव होता है गर्मी बहुत होती है तो फिर जो हमारा रिपोर्ट में और पत्रकारों में वो जो आता है गर्मी का आंकड़ा दो पॉइंट ढाई पॉइंट आता है लेकिन जो गांव में है रण में है वो गर्मी बहुत उनसे भी ज़्यादा होती है उनकी परिस्थिति बहुत ज़्यादा हमारी हो रही है और उनके साथ जो उनकी बहनों का हमारा जो गर्भ होता है ज़्यादा गर्मी के हिसाब से कभी कभी गिर भी जाता है और ऐसे बच्चों में बहुत सारी बीमारियाँ भी होती है तो अस्पताल की भी कोई सुविधा नहीं होती है लेकिन जो घर घर तो इलाज है वो करते हैं और जो गर्मी के हिसाब से हमारा खेती में खेती पूरा फसल आज आ जाता है हाथ में और खाने का निवाला जब लेना होता है तब अचानक से बारिश आ जाती है 
तो पूरा नुकसान हो जाता है तो उसके हिसाब से जो उनको भी खेती में बहुत सारा नुकसान हो जाता है और नमक में मैं ज़्यादा कहूँ कि नमक में जब पूरा उनका बाप दादा का धंधा है वो धंधा नमक में पूरा उनका शरीर एकदम कठन हो गया हो जाता है जब वो मर जाते हैं तब उनकी जो शमशान में जो चिता को आग लगाते हैं तब उनकी जो शरीर है उनकी शरीर भी पूरा नहीं जलता तो इससे दुख की बात हम क्या बताएं ऐसे हमारी परिस्थिति है नमक की और नमस्ते नमस्ते धन्यवाद मेरा नाम शारदा बहन है और मैं औरंगाबाद से आई हूँ और मैं एक खुद एक कामगार बहन हूँ तो मैं बताना चाहूँगी कि हमारे इधर जो खेती खेती में कामगार बहन काम करती है तो इसमें बहनों अगर से मतलब कामगार बहने होती है या कुछ खुद के खेती वाली बहने होती है तो वो खेती में जाती है तो धूप के कारण मतलब ज़्यादा काम करती है तो धूप के कारण बहुत सारी बहने ऐसी बीमारी पड़ जाती है और बीमार पड़ने के बाद ऐसा भी होता है कि ज़्यादा धूप होगी तो वो बहने कुछ मतलब कुछ बहने को बहने मर भी सकती है और इसमें हमारा जो खेत रहता है तो खेत में जो बारिश मतलब हमारा जो कपास रहता है या मक्का रहती है तो इसमें ज़्यादा बारिश होने के बाद कभी कभी ऐसा होता है पहले ऐसा था कि ज़्यादा बारिश नहीं होती थी लेकिन अभी ऐसा होता है कि एक ही दिन में ज़्यादा बारिश होने की वजह से जो हमारा खेत का कपास वो कुछ रहता है तो उसका पूरा नुकसान हो जाता है इसकी वजह से जो बहने रहती है वो उन्होंने जो काम किया था तो वो पूरा मतलब फसल चला जाता है और हमारे जो पशुधन रहते हैं तो ये गर्मियों के वजह से पशुधन को क्या होता है कि वो चारा नहीं मिलता है पानी पानी की बहुत दिक्कत आती है इसकी वजह से जो किसान बहने या सदस्य बहने रहती है उनको वो बेच देना पड़ता है तो इसमें भी उनकी बहुत सारी नुकसान होती है और जो हमारे गांव में जो गरीब बहने रहती है तो उनको काम का बहुत दिक्कत आता है तो काम में भी वो उनको बहुत प्रॉब्लम हो जाता है और हम हमारे जो दूधजन्य प्राणी है तो उनका दूध भी गर्मियों की वजह से कम हो जाता है तो वो उनको हमें बेचना पड़ता है और जो हमारी हम जो खेत में काम करते हैं तो उनमें जो हमारी बहनें हैं तो उनको ज़्यादा भी दिक्कत आ जाती है थैंक यू थैंक्स सो मच टू ऑल ऑफ नाउ मैं टर्न थिंग्स ओवर टू ग्रांड एंड ही टॉक यू अबाउट क्लाइम इम्पैक्ट across the world over to you grant oh hold on today in person there we go or at least live online with you but it is the middle of the night where i am <laughs> and i have a small baby so i'm already not getting enough sleep uh so you get me recorded and trevin will walk you through uh my portion of the workshop so I'm going to go through climate impacts. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Grant Schonkweiler. I'm a production and leadership consultant and coach at my own company called Schonk Ventures, because apparently I'm obsessed with my own name. I'm a senior fellow at the Adrian R. Rockefeller Foundation Resilience Center at the Atlantic Council. That's a mouthful. I'm a former producer of, at Epic Games and id Software and a company called Megatouch Games. Uh, I'm a former lead designer and programmer. I've shipped 65 plus games. I've been making games for 20 years and 13 of that, uh, I've convinced people to pay me. So here's my agenda. I'm a producer, so it's really important for me to tell you what the agenda is. And first off, I wanna give you a disclaimer. We're gonna be talking about some incredibly hard topics today. Uh, I will try to, try to present them in a easy to understand and in sometimes fun way. I'm doing it in this way because otherwise the data I'm giving you could be crushing. Just know I take this all very seriously. So here's what we're going to go over. We did the introduction. Congratulations. Uh, we're going to do a quick focus ex exercise. Then there's 20 minutes of my presentation and 20 minutes of group breakouts to brainstorm ideas. Uh, you can ask questions during the breakout of Trevin. Uh, so over the last few years, we've been through a lot. We've had a pandemic. We've had, uh, you know, the rise of understanding of the climate impact we've been through a lot and so i want us to focus together on this next section of uh, the workshop and really prepare us for the entire day so if you're willing and able please stand up and what i want you to do is i want you to imagine all the things that are going on in your life all the things that have weighed down on you throughout the year uh, or the last two years um, and bring them to a ball in the center just right here 
And on the count of three, what we're going to do is we're going to shout together and we're going to push that out so we can be present together today. Now, my son is napping right now, so I probably won't shout too loud, but I want you to shout as loud as you can. I want you to freak out anybody uh, that isn't in the session that may be outside. All right, ready? Bring it all together. One, two, three. Ah! All right. Thank you so much. Hopefully we all got, got the jitters out. Uh, go ahead and have a seat. Thank you for participating with me. Now, you might be wondering what I mean when I say climate impacts. So let's define the term. Climate impacts are the downstream effects of climate change. Uh, you know, sea level rise is an impact, but we were talking about uh, a lot more things and a lot more impacts than that today. So an example would be mass migration. Here are the major impact categories we will be discussing today. Heat waves, flooding and drought cycles, ocean destruction, air pollution, food and water scarcity, security, sorry, financial mig and migration. One thing to keep in mind when talking about impacts is the fact that while this is a global problem and will be even more so soon, a lot of these impacts are focused in more equatorial or southern hemisphere countries. Um, so depending on where you're from, if you're all from India, you're probably seeing a lot of these impacts, but if you're not, uh, some of these impacts may not be as visible to you. Um, we're going to discuss going to discuss some impacts and some interventions and things to make people more resilient. Though a lot of what I'll be going through will be about resilience, and that doesn't mean you have to make your game about just resilience. It can also be about interventions. Both are needed for us to serve, survive as a species. I really want to challenge you all to make games and stories that aren't just touching on the environment changing, but more on teaching people how to be more resilient through play. Now, let's jump into the impacts. First one is heat waves, uh, heat waves and forest fires. Uh, this has been a huge one in the western parts of North America. Wildfires cause the loss of tree covers in forest impacting the air quality and the oxygen available to human beings and animals. Forests provide us with a whole bunch of things, including livelihoods, water, shelter, food, security, um, and others less obvious like medical uh, and cosmetic detergents and things like that. After oceans, forests are the world's largest storehouses of carbon. Some interventions are understanding of how forest fires start, understanding of how to prevent forest fires, and understanding how to... Heat waves, heat islands. The term heat island describes built up areas that are hotter than nearby rural areas. Heat islands can affect communities by increasing summertime peak energy demand, air conditioning cost, air pollution, and greenhouse gas emissions, heat related illness and mortality and water pollution. Some of the interventions are urban forest, parks, and urban, urban horticulture. Heat waves, urban heat waves. Uh, governments and local authorities are responsible for protecting citizens when disasters hit. Most cities have plans for when a tornado, hurricane, or flood happen, but few have plans for heat waves. With rising temperatures across the globe, policymakers need to develop tools that can prevent and prepare, or, sorry, prepare cities to adapt to a changing environment. Uh, interventions, a heat action plan, educating the populace, uh, and educating policymakers. Heat waves, construction site laborers. Construction workers or laborers suffer from heat stroke, heat exhaustion, and other heat health issues due to continued exposure to sun. Uh, exposure to sun can have uh, massive impacts to a person's health. I have a personal story of this. I was building houses in Mexico, and a woman I was working with um, got heat stroke. By the time we recognized the symptoms, it was too late. She was projectile vomiting and very sick. Um, interventions are managing exposure, educating on symptoms, especially those early symptoms, and educating on treatment. Heat waves, poor construction practices, rapid urbanization does not allow enough time for cities to plan properly for the population explosion. In developing countries especially, construction is done rapidly and in inexpensive ways. Also, people aren't using the best, newest, and latest materials that can absorb pollution or reduce heat. So interventions, urban planning, identifying heat radiating materials, lead and green building practices. Those are two that I'm personally really excited about. Heat waves, urban disasters. Uh, the lack of proper emergency services and disaster kits increase the losses for a community, city, and government. These losses are both of lives, financial, and infrastructure. Emergency managers have to be poised to respond to disasters and support preparedness efforts. So trained emergency services and disaster kits. Uh, 
heat waves, poor access to drinking water, lack of sufficient drinking water can cause multiple health issues. Water is needed to keep the body cool, for example, uh, and under normal uh, conditions, the body's internal thermostat produces perspiration, which of course you need water to stay hydrated. So interventions, access to clean drinking water. Heat waves, also human health effects. The changing environment is expected to cause more heat stress, an increase in waterborne diseases, poor air quality, and diseases transmitted by insects and rodents. Uh, interventions are access to public health care, information on new illnesses, and really just making people aware uh, uh, that this is happening. Uh, poor communication, lack of adequate and timely communication in times of disasters can cause a great deal of damage. Government authorities should use the media in all forms, social media included, to reach people with updates on a disaster. So a, a communication strategy is really the main intervention here. All right, moving on to flooding and drought cycles. Uh, wildfires again, hotter and drier weather is causing wildfires and destroying forests. Uh, obviously, we understand that that is a problem. Some interventions, understanding of how forest fires start, understanding of how to prevent them, and understanding how to escape them. Uh, water shortages, once again, they're happening all across the world right now. And even where I am in the U.S., we have water shortages. Um, this can be devastating for a lot of reasons. Some of the interventions, urban horticulture, drip irrigation, plumbing, water rationing, and rainwater collection. Uh, urban flooding, um, lack of planning in cities causes them to build infrastructure haphazardly, increasing the chances of floods to occur. Floods occur, obviously, when large volumes of runoff flow quickly into streams and rivers. Um, you know, the natural way that floods don't happen is by being absorbed into the ground. And if you have a bunch of uh, concrete, there's no way it's being absorbed. So urban planning, drainage networks, I mean, that just sounds like a video game, right? Putting pipes in the right way. Oceans. Uh, oceans are getting hotter, and part of that problem is damage to wetlands and infrastructure. As they get hotter, the oceans, they observe 90% of the extra heat in the climate. Nearly a third of carbon dioxide emissions end up in the oceans, triggering a chemistry change that makes the water more acidic, dissolving the shells of sea creatures. The ocean is almost 40% more acidic than it used to be. That's just wild. Some of the interventions here are planting more wetlands and understanding their benefits around the globe. Uh, island nations, as sea levels rise, island nations like Tuvalu and Nauru are hit hardest. Some of them could potentially disappear as early as 2050. Our first goal is to stop the planet from warming two degrees Celsius, but if we can't stop that, we need to focus on how to prepare these people. You may remember that the uh, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu did his COP presentation standing in water on his island. That was an island at some point, and now it's just water. So preparedness, urban planning, preparing for floods, to tsunamis, and rising water levels. This is a, vi uh, a picture of Japan uh, where they have built these types of constructions. Uh, fish and aquatic life conservations and coral reefs. This one has been mentioned before. The warming of the oceans has a dramatic effect on the oceans and coral reefs. We are still studying exactly how to stop this. Some interventions, gaining awareness of the damage, learning ways to reduce and reverse the damage, and simple things like ocean safe sunscreen. Hurricanes. Hurricanes are becoming more frequent as the oceans warm up. This picture was taken about 70 kilometers from where I live, uh, and, and we got hit with another hurricane this year, and I lost power for a few days. So hurricanes, preparing and organizing, education and disaster kits. Everybody around me has a disaster kit, and we know what to do when a hurricane comes, and it saves lives. Uh, water pollution. Water pollution is something that is increasing both from people dumping into the water and the warmth of the water. So interventions, managing water temperatures, increased laws around disease causing agents that go into the water and education on water quality. Uh, rising water levels. This is the most talked about uh, impact, so I won't go into it in depth. Preparing and protecting education and coastal protection like the picture I showed from Japan. Uh, food and water security. 
uh, we'll talk about land here. Sea level rise is, is ratcheting up the frequency and intensity of flooding on farms and coastal regions. These costly floods devastate crops and livestock, accelerating soil erosion, uh, polluting the water, and damaging roads and other infrastructure. Rising average, uh, rising average temperatures, more extreme heat throughout the year, fewer sufficiently cool days during the winter, and more frequent cold seasons thaws will likely affect farmers in these re regions. We're also having severe droughts. Um, uh, so proper land management, proper crop rotation, understanding how a changing climate impacts the soil and nutrients present in it. For example, in the American West, where they were growing almond trees that take a lot of water, they've now started growing agave uh, to make tequila. So we can't have almonds, but we can all get drunk, I guess. Uh, so food and water security, agricultural yield, changing climate impacts the soil. You know, we've talked about this, um, it, it, the rain patterns, the nutrients for the plants, exposure from the sun, all those things change what we're getting, as well as a change in migrant patterns of insects. So interventions, proper land management, proper crop rotation, understanding how a changing climate impacts the soil and nutrients present. Uh, Gardening, uh, I have a nice big garden at my house, and indoor agriculture are also important. Finance, most people don't like to talk about this, but you know, finance is a video game basically already made, so I'll, I'll bring it up as it may be something someone wants to use. Wildfires can burn uh, millions of acres of land at rapid speeds and can consume everything, as we've talked about. So understanding the causes of wildfires and how to prevent them, proper evacuation plans, and using this really cool tool called the RECA tool, R-E-C-A, to plan for financial impacts. It's an open source tool. It's really interesting if you want to check it out. Uh, I find it, it it's something really fascinating. Migration. Migration is one of the biggest impacts that we see from climate change already and will continue to grow. And I wanted to dedicate a whole section to understanding how things that happen to the world can disrupt lives downstream. I mentioned that sea level rise is forcing people to become climate refugees, but we are seeing the same thing with extreme heat and the destruction of forests. Trevin, who you are all uh, with right now, mentioned that he is a climate refugee uh, during his introduction. In 2018, the World Bank estimated that three regions, Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Southeast Asia, will generate 143 million more climate migrants by 2050. In 2017, 68.5 million people were forcibly displaced, more than at any time in human history. While it is difficult to estimate, approximately one third of those, around 22 to 24 million people, were forced to move by sudden onset weather events, flooding, forest fires, etc. Some of the interventions are the awareness of mass migration, uh, welcoming countries, and understanding what causes it. Vulnerable communities and slums. Vulnerable, vulnerable communities and slums. We need people to be more aware of them. Uh, we need education on how to help these areas, education for the people in the areas, and basic housing and sanitation. Uh, human trafficking. We need people to understand uh, how this takes place, to recognize ways that will protect uh, them, provide um, you know, more information for women and girls on health issues, physical and mental, and need to uh, have more laws and training of professionals to help reintegrate trafficked people. Um, airlines are starting to train people on how to recognize human trafficking, and in the last few years, hundreds of people have been saved uh, on flights. Host for migrants. Uh, we can teach people about how they can help take care of migrants, providing livelihood tools and supporting financial independence of migrants. People are not prepared with the understanding of what to do when migrants are moving to their community. They're unaware of ways to help them feel comfortable in the new place, and some communities are outright unwelcome. As migrants pick up their lives and move to new locations, they're scared and nervous of what they're heading into. Preparing host communities with the right kinds of mindsets and information can help the situation better for be better for both immigrants, sorry, migrants and hosts. Uh, welcoming countries, livelihood tools, and financial support. Uh, personal security, assaults on women and girls, being robbed or murdered, lack of food and water resources, children being kidnapped, drug abuses. There's there's a huge host of things that happen uh, while, while people are migrating. Um, they walk for days at length 
And what we need to do is make migration safer, provide safe avenues for people to migrate, teach self-defense and protection, and educate the people who are, are migrating. And of course, migration isn't just applying to humans. It's increasing throughout the animal kingdom as well. As the climate changes, animals are forced to go to regions that they've never been to before. So we need to be aware of what's happening there and see what we can do to help it. Uh, water scarcity. Water scarcity is causing mass migration and violence throughout the world. Uh, again, interventions, learning how to conserve water, awareness of issues with terrible working conditions. Whether it is migration between two countries or migration within a country, individuals being displaced face multiple challenges, including lack of resources, safety issues, difficult working conditions, abuse in the workplace, and of course, the impact that it has on their families as well. So understanding the abuse of migrants in the workplace is very important and how to prevent that. Now, all of this can seem pretty dark, but there is hope, I promise you. If we can unite groups of people around these ideas of interventions, we can save lives and change the tide. I hope that your games uh, that you will start working on today will be the beginning of the journey to bring people into the rebellion. And in the words of one of my favorite Star Wars characters, rebellions are built on hope. Now we're gonna go into our first breakout uh, together. All right, we're gonna go into our first breakout. I'll let Shut them up there. Okay, let me tell you what's happening next. Basically, before, and we're going to let you go on a break in just a couple of minutes. Just give me one more minute. Basically, what we want you to do for each table, we want you to pick a climate topic based on everything you just heard today that you're going to carry through the rest of the day. Now, don't take this with a lot of pressure. You should spend one minute choosing a topic. Maybe two or three of you at a table agree on a topic, and in which case it's really easy. If none of you agree, just take one of these pads of paper. Everyone write down the one thing you're interested in. Shuffle it up. Whatever's on top, that's your topic for the day. Put it in the middle of the table. Once you've done that, or if you want to do that right when you come back, you can go ahead, take five minute coffee, grab a coffee, uh, get some water. We're going to start back up here at, uh, what time is it? At 11.40. We're going to kick off, and our no is coming from, uh, he's on Zoom already, waiting in the wings, going to speak to you live from France about how you can start to build a game around these topics you've picked no matter what your discipline is, no matter what your background is. I'm very excited for the next step. Any questions? All right, yeah? That's a really good question. So as we keep sharing, we have the uh, IGDA Climate SIG, the Special Interest Group Discord. I highly recommend if you join that, you can reach out to any of us directly and we can just share with you the information. Yeah, all right. Take five minutes, be back here at uh, 11.40, and choose a topic amongst your tables really quickly. Again, just take one minute for that. Don't take too long on that. And we'll pick up back then at that time. Thanks. <laughs> 